Alright guys, so welcome to uh, Architect Network's milestone talk. We're on number 30, uh, which is a, a big one for us. And we're going to talk about the future of Clubhouse for architects. And so, you know, we were looking for like, we were going to do, um, you know, like a, try and get a, a specific guest on or something like that. And I thought what would be more interesting is to get everyone that's kind of in the clubhouse space is in the architecture clubhouse space and talk about clubhouse itself because it's really a conversation that we've been having between ourselves, Guillaume and Faisal. Guillaume unfortunately can't join and Faisal is just working through some VPN issues. <laughs> it seems like every week there's a different uh, VPN you have to find to make it work from Dubai. But, um, yeah, so I invited uh, everyone on the stage t today. I'll go through everyone's, uh, uh, who everyone is. Also, uh, I doubt that many people need uh, too much of an introduction. But um, yeah, I think it'd be interesting just to discuss what you guys think of Clubhouse. So, uh, you know, at the moment we've got uh, Stephen Drew. So he is one of the founders, or he is the founder of the Architecture Social. I would say, Stephen, you were on Clubhouse from, uh, I think, you know, before when I joined, maybe at the beginning of this year, you've now built up a pretty awesome clubhouse. Your, uh, your buddy, your partner in crime, Jason, Jason Boyle is the founder of the Global Architecture Alliance, who I feel like you guys both kind of came into this space around the same time. Also an OG clubhouser from, from the kind of what I call the hype days, the early days. Uh, and then we've got, Tim Ung and Mike Lavalli, who are the co-founders of Architecture and Design Club. These guys have a huge club that's really, really grown um, over the last few years, uh, over the last year or so. Again, Tim, I don't know when you joined, but I'm sure you can uh, jump in and correct me in a minute. Uh, so thank you guys for joining. And then we have what I think is, is kind of like the, the new generation. I know uh, Mamuna Rashad joined a few months ago into the into the clubhouse space and you created your own club moving minds which is awesome and then we've also got a friend of mine georgie and help me out with your surname here let Le the chat the chachki um so Lishtarsky, Lishtarsky. But it's, uh, it's complicated for everybody Sorry. that's not bulgarian yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, who is literally, you've done one talk so far and you've, you've kind of moved your established or you've added to your established podcast. Uh, you've, you've moved into the clubhouse space and, you know, we did, uh, I, I joined your first talk, uh, this week or just a few days ago. And so you are brand new to the world of Clubhouse. And Georgie actually had me on his podcast as a number 30th talk. So I thought it was only suiting that you joined on my podcast for the, for the 30th talk. So thanks everyone for joining. I don't know if anyone wants to add to, uh, to that kind of any, uh, parts that I missed out, but, um, yeah, it's good to see a lot of familiar faces in, uh, one room. So maybe just to kick things off, I'll just go through everyone and just get a feel for like, what is your feeling of Clubhouse right now? So, cause I think, you know, there's a portion of us, I, I feel like, or maybe just clarify when you exactly you started on Clubhouse and then what you feel how Clubhouse is, is kind of doing right now. And I, I'll kind of begin that with that, like, uh, you know, obviously I joined, uh, at the beginning of this year. Um, I think I joined, I can look at my profile actually, but, uh, something like February 2020. And, you know, I think that was the, the hype period where everyone was like, Oh my God, you on Clubhouse? Have you got an invite for Clubhouse and, and all this kind of stuff? And, you know, there was this insane hype period where everyone was trying to get onto the platform. And, you know, we started doing talks. And then, of course, there was the tidal waves of, like, new releases, like, the Android dudes came on. And then, you, you know, Clubhouse wasn't available in the UK, and then it became available, and then it came available in India or something. And so there was always this kind of hype. And, and now I feel we're in a kind of a little bit of a plateau, and I'm just kind of, uh, I don't see as much growth and activity on the platform and i'm just internally we were like you know we've obviously started a youtube channel we're kind of like well how does 
Clubhouse fit into this? It's obviously where we started, but I'm not quite sure where it's going. So maybe we'll start down the list as, as I can view it. I don't know if you view it slightly differently, but at the moment, I've got Stephen at the top of the list. So Stephen, do you want to kick us off and just say, how long have you been on Clubhouse so far and what's your what's your current thoughts right now? Yeah, sure. So um, I joined here in February. So I heard the the rustlings of Clubhouse and I was thinking, I'm an Android user. Oh my gosh, here's a fuss again. And then it got more and more palpable. You know, there was like this talk. And so me and Jason, we do a, we've done a lot of stuff together online. And I think Jason sent me a WhatsApp and he's like, oh, this Clubhouse is amazing. And I was like, get the hell out of here. He's like, no, no, seriously, you need to listen. So I listened, which, you know, is it was is rare sometimes because I, I run 200 miles an hour and he's like, you got to get on here. So Jason actually sent me the invite to Clubhouse and it was doing that sweet spot. I mean, many people couldn't get on there, which is kind of like a blessing and a burden. You know, it reminds me a bit of the Soul House thing of it's quite special when you can't get into it because suddenly then there's a massive appeal to it. Right. Everyone wants to get into the party they can't get into. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like, I want to, I want to go, I want to go there. And, and also it was kind of like mid still during the pandemic. So, right. I think and, that was a huge component, man, the pandemic. I mean, everyone was sat at home, like I need someone to talk to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and also it was a new medium. And I think that, um, I'm lucky because, part of my career especially years and years in recruitment i speak on the phone so to me it kind of felt natural you just have to get in the swing of you know i guess clubhouse etiquette and i kind of like breaking clubhouse etiquette a bit because I, it just you know we've got this set of rules to follow that bit i'm not t- to me isn't really the focus but what was magical was is that you could get people in the room and you could have a real interesting conversation off the cuff and there's still something special about clubhouse with that now but i i have to agree there was an element of diminishing returns and i think uh i went for a lot of topics and it was kind of uh, really good to go through and jason helped me a lot and we had some amazing great rooms that still do have amazing great rooms um what i do think that there is definitely a fatigue you know everyone gets a bit of fatigue right. with these things and for me we have to remind ourselves it's a tool you know, and it's a tool of conversation. And I think in that sense, it's really, really successful. However, what I notice is people move on to different means of communication. And right now, I think people are kind of a bit fed up of being locked up. And they actually, the big thing right now is to meet in person, or at least it feels like that for me. So I'm starting to see events come into life. Yeah, get back to and the I pub think- and yeah exactly you get <laughs> placed in the pub together rather than remotely but i think that that's um i think clubhouse is never going to go i think what you'll find is like ebbs and flows and i think right now we've got fatigue but i mean i uh, just to kind of um finalize on that point is that you know what the, the architecture social it was interesting you mentioned it as a as a as a clubhouse and while we've had a few rooms really I like to spread my bets on things because I think you can put your egg in one basket. So I do a bit on YouTube. I do a bit on, uh, I do a podcast and I do the clubhouse and the Arctic social as a forum is lots and lots of different stuff. And so a good example uh, outside of clubhouse is actually the Arctic social forum around last Christmas. It had like a thousand people logging on a day. Now I think it gets like 500 people logging in per week. So it's a massive difference. But ironically, on the other side of it, the, the website traffic to the dot com has gone up and up and up. And I think you've got to be okay with moving on and taking the audience that you've you've built with you onto different mediums so there's some connections some podcasts that i've made from the people that i've met in clubhouse which is super valuable and it's been really you learned a lot of skills doing it but do you keep doing rooms and rooms and rooms all the time i mean it's really difficult so that's what i would think about it ollie i think we're in the lower lull but there's still something about it the connections you make with people is um, really valuable, you know. Yeah, no. I mean, it, it obviously goes for everyone's. Uh, I think everyone on the stage has a has a you know a club, but it's part of a wider network of things. And you're totally right. Is is this this is just one of them? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think that's um, yes, it's definitely a kind of similar track. 
Um, but yeah, there, there is something nice about that uh, interaction with the crowd and things like that. Maybe just cause, uh, uh, I know you and, you and Jason kind of, uh, knew each other before. We'll, we'll also move over to Jason. And actually, Jason, do you want to explain how you and Steven know each other before? Cause I actually don't know, uh, your guys' connection. And then, yeah, give us your, your thoughts on Clubhouse as well. Yeah. How do we know each other, Steven? <laughs> Yeah. Who, who are you guys? <laughs> I, I mean, I think it's because we both enjoy um, the, the the weird and wonderful world of LinkedIn and also building yeah. up audiences and stuff. That's probably like our, like what we would have a pint over and talk about as it's an interesting, but what do you tell me, Jason? You, you, you yeah. know, tell, tell from your perspective. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I, as you probably know, I, I my platform is definitely LinkedIn, um, and I've I've put a lot of effort into growing that platform. Um, I believe um, Stephen and I started. Um, I think I texted you, Stephen, and said you can now create your own club, Stephen. Let's do it. And we we actually created the club within the same I think five minutes. Um, and Stephen, obviously, it was very easy for him because he already had the architecture social and um, it was just easy for him to grab that name. I had to think in five minutes of a title of my club and it's still there now. So, you know, I am I wanted something where I could abbreviate it to, you know, like the GAA. Um, I don't know whether it slips off the tongue or not, but, you know, I wanted it to be worldwide because I, I do see Clubhouse... Um, it's still in its infancy, and yes, it has waned, um, definitely. But I think, like Stephen said, it is a tool. So I don't think it should ever be dismissed. I think the same thing happened on Twitter and Facebook and um, you know many of the other platforms, even LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn went through a period where people weren't really that interested in it, and a lot of people call LinkedIn quite boring. Um, so, so, so it is, it is um, a platform um that you know it, it it's in its infancy and i joined and i think i grew my club on the back of linkedin so i could pull people across and advertise that i had this club um all over linkedin and then that was the way i could build a club fairly quickly and Stephen did the same thing you know because he had the architecture social so he could just pull people over and advertise so if you have got if you've got an existing platform, I don't know what, what Ollie, what what you what your thoughts are on this one as well, because I think we're all interested in how you grew such a big club. Is if you do have an existing number of followers on a different platform, it's so much easier to build a bigger club. Um, I could talk I could talk for hours on how I've grown the Global Architect Alliance, and we've done thirty five, well thirty four rooms in a row. And all the issues with that that goes on behind the scenes, and the amount of effort that goes into just produce, you know, putting on one room a week at seven o'clock. And I worked with Stephen on Wednesdays as well, and we bounced topics off. Right, you you were kind of doing yeah. one on each other's, right? At some yeah, point, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think I think that the main thing that's probably happened, in my opinion, is we came out of lockdown. Mm. and and that and people now are going back to the pubs so i was doing yeah. friday nights i was doing friday nights believe it or not yeah it uh, that getting, seems like, a bit nuts people. doesn't it yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that is a great point actually i think it is uh it was just a perfect time for clubhouse and maybe that's why it was so you know so popular at the beginning yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know so i could talk about i could go on and on about it but i'm conscious there's other people on the stage yeah. and you know but, but that's we'll, my we'll come talk. back we'll come back don't worry um next up we'll maybe we'll talk in, to to mike and tim kind of at the at the same time because they you know mike and tim you you co-founded uh your club and but i know this it was kind of a you know your club the the architect and design club and you guys have uh, really blown up i felt i felt like you were kind of I remember seeing you guys and, and you were like, I remember 3,000, 4,000 and then you guys are up to like 11,000 last time I checked. Um, but I know you guys, you know, you knew each other beforehand. You've been doing a pot, you've been doing the whole podcasting thing for a little while on other platforms. So, 
Um, yeah, it'd be great to hear how you guys got into it and when exactly did you guys jump into the clubhouse, uh, to the clubhouse game? Tim, I'll let you jump in. Yeah, Tim or Mike, who, whoever wants sure. to jump in. So, so in, in terms of when we got in, um, I think I was using clubhouse since the middle of January of this year. And then I invited Mike right after I got an invite. Cause we both were like, what is this platform? Right. We didn't really know too much about it. And so once we started up, I remember in the very beginning, it was very scary for a lot of people to raise their hand to jump on stage. You would start a room, not a lot of people would, were, were used to doing it because right. a lot of introverts were using this, this app, right? So all the introverts would join a, a room and no one would want to raise their hand. And so you're on stage by yourself and you're like dancing with words, right? You're trying to entice someone to come up and converse with you. And I remember in the beginning joining rooms and seeing this happen. And then I didn't see any architecture rooms. And I was like, where are all the architects? You know, Jason and Steven didn't start on Clubhouse yet. Ali, you weren't on here yet. And once February rolled around, I was like, I should start some rooms. So I started making a lot of Clubhouse rooms. And from there, I started to meet so many people. I think Faisal is one of the people in the architecture rooms that I met early on, because I don't know when Faisal got in, but he's been using it since then. He was, yeah, he's an early mover. I don't, he, yeah. he's, he's got a, some VPN issues. I don't know if he can just hear us, but um, <laughs> yeah, he was an early one. Yeah, that's fine. He doesn't need to respond, but that, that he's one of the first people I met on here. And we were having fun discussions about architecture. And I think what I found to be different then versus now is that because it was a gated community, there were people who were, one, paid to be on here. So big celebrities were actually paid to use Clubhouse back then. The second thing was you had really big name people, right? People like Chris Doe, people like Gary V. You had a lot of people who were known in all the circuits around the world on this platform, starting rooms and conversing and, and sharing their knowledge. Then you had all that energy and everyone else started to join. And then the architecture discussions started to grow. And from there, I started seeing Jason and Steven, Ali, I saw you at one point. And then back then, when we were starting the club, the Architecture and Design Club, you couldn't actually just start a club like you could today. You needed to apply and wait in right, the queue. Right, right. I was to go through yeah. thousands of people. You had to email them or something, wasn't it? Or there was That's like an right. application or something. Yeah, and so then we ended up getting the club at the tail end as soon as they allowed everyone to do it. And we're like, oh, okay, well, now we have a club. What are we going to do with this club? And I remember early in the morning, and I was like, hey, Mike, I have the club. What should we call it? What should we do? And Mike didn't really use the platform as much as I did, so he was just like, well, we could do whatever. And so we just started from there, and I kept going with these rooms. I started a series where I was interviewing people that I admired. And back then, you had people who you really admire from the field, from other fields. And you could really get into a deep dive discussion with them and get into the nitty gritty of a discussion. And from that, it started to lead to more opportunities. There were some paid speaking engagements, things like that. And there were a lot of opportunities then. And I think what ended up happening is it opened up to Android, celebrities stopped getting paid, and people who were bigger started to see that the algorithms were changing. Back then, when you started a room, it pinged everyone and their mother, right? Like everyone got a ping and you would join. When people joined, the discussion started. Today, when you start a room, it takes 5 to 15 minutes or something like that for it to send out one ping and most people turn their notifications off because Clubhouse just kept pinging you over and over again. So I turned mine off and I know everyone else did. And it got to a point where I also noticed the level and quality of discussions got extremely repetitive to this day. That in the beginning, you had great ideas, you had big ideas coming out, you had people who were sharing things that they actually believed in, and then it started to get saturated with salespeople, people pushing a product, people pushing a digital thing, trying to get you to sign up for this, sign up for that, sign up for this newsletter, and then it became this push-pull. like. If you join any of the big rooms, you'll always hear, hey, if you donate money, we'll let you come on stage so you can pitch an idea. Hey, if you click that button and you give me money on Clubhouse, I'll do this and that. So it became this different atmosphere. It's like every social app, right? You reach a point where a company 
is now trying to make money on it or a person is trying to build a brand on it but they build it on the backs of other people and they start to really try and pull from the people who are here and people don't like that so they stop using it so a lot of the original people that were in clubhouse in the beginning like i see bill luza's down there and a few other people in the audience they were there in the beginning when we were able to have discussions about anything and everything without feeling like someone was going to pitch you something and try and spin something into their court. Yeah. And I guess the, the last thing I'll talk about, and, and this will be a quick one, is the difference between the early days of Clubhouse and what I'm seeing now is that in the early days, people were actually genuine and sharing things that they authentically believed in and knew about. Whereas today, I find that a lot of people go into a room, hear something that sounds cool and people were clapping on stage, and they'll go into another room and say it and claim it as their own. And then you have this repetition happening where there's no authenticity because no one is actually telling you what they believe. They're just telling you what someone else believes, but they're claiming it as their own. And then it just saturates this entire app. And once that happens, there's no reason to keep joining more rooms because everyone's saying the same thing interesting interesting yeah i've i haven't been in too many rooms where people are selling stuff a couple times like specifically architecture things where people have definitely been plugging some random uh I, there was this one guy about like uh added homes in in uh the u.s that would, would not shut up <laughs> but um yeah I, I know what you mean it's definitely kind of monetized a little bit mike i don't know if you want to add anything to that but i think um there's an interesting summary of like the idea of people just regurgitating and it then i guess becomes like an echo chamber is what you're what you're kind of saying um yeah i, I mean i think in in general where i've seen clubhouse go and i i want tim to speak first because of the two of us you know we've, we've had a podcast for a long time but tim was very much the champion of us getting on Clubhouse and pursuing it as an opportunity to share discussions in a, in a much more live setting. So we've been, we have a podcast that's been going since uh, 2017, 2018, you know, 150 plus episodes or whatever. And we found it as a way to really connect with individuals. I think the, the power of Clubhouse is that it's happening right now. You guys are here in the, you know, quote unquote room with us, and we're having a really interesting dialogue on something. And I think the format of this medium was really appealing to Tim and I because we, when you're, for anybody who hasn't recorded a podcast before, it's very one sided and it's very, um, where you're putting like a blog post or, um, other kinds of content, you're putting it out there and just kind of sharing it with people and trying to get people interested in. But when you're in Clubhouse, you're able to have those conversations, you're able to have real time feedback. And honestly, you're able to change your perspectives on things. I think Clubhouse has been a great resource for me to bring my opinions to the table, but then also have them challenged from time to time and maybe have a new idea that comes out of that or a new way of thinking about something. It doesn't really happen when you're putting this content into the ether and just hoping that it either sticks or that it resonates with somebody, you find out in real time um, the kinds of things that you're talking about. Are they resonating with people? Are they not? And I think it's just for Clubhouse, I see it as like I'm, a, I'm primarily a blogger. I would say that I write first as my primary uh, sort of medium of choice. And that has had ups and downs in terms of you know, right. blogs are popular, blogs are not popular, podcasts, the same thing. Um, yeah, I've I think seen you doing seeing, a lot of writing stuff recently. Yeah, and I, I think I'm just, I'm going back into that as really my focus. And I think Clubhouse is a way to, it, it's been mentioned once or twice here that it's a way for you to bring people to those other medium. But I think what makes Clubhouse special is just that it's it's really this, opportunity for people to say things um not necessarily always feel judged like the there's a magic about you not having to show your face on this app you know in a real-time way that kind of disarms you it allows you to not have your guard up i can kind of have a conversation with people and they don't always feel as timid there is still that kind of fear but um uh, especially early on people wouldn't just kind of get up and talk but 
I found yeah. that it's it's opened up the conversations a lot. I think that's a good point. The, the no video stuff it definitely does open it up, and uh, yeah, of course everyone was kind of a little bit nervous when you first. Talk. I think it was intimidating when you first joined the room for the first time. You were just unclear, like fuck, are people? Am I talking to people right now? Or like because you, it wasn't quite clear yeah. that you were on stage or not on stage. Actually, we'll get to bugbears of of Clubhouse, but one of my bugbears right now, or like since I've had it, is the the like notifications come at the top of your phone, and you're always like, there's always something at the top of your phone you're doing, whether you're like a mess. The messenger thing on Instagram is at the top right hand corner, like you know, if you're on a website, the you know cross or whatever it is is on the top right hand corner and all the time you you click it and then just as you click it a notification comes in and you suddenly join someone's room and you know you're just in the in the middle of the office and suddenly like your phone just starts blurting out loud about nfts and something you're like oh my god get out of here <laughs> um but yeah i think that can be uh it's also really easy to get going like you can just do this sitting at home you know chilling kind of thing um but yeah i think you you and uh tim have definitely uh had you know one of the most two active people along with steven and, and jason i think you guys have have been consistently the most active people i've seen on the platform as well um otherwise this brings us to uh the kind of uh the new kids on the block i think i might jump over to mamuna and and see Mamuna what what you think of Clubhouse. I know you you joined. You're not like super new. You joined a few months ago. Maybe talk to us about when you joined and and you know why and how you feel Clubhouse is for you at the moment. Yeah. Hi, Oli. Thank you so much for and um, inviting me here. Um, I'm the founder of Moving Minds um, on Clubhouse. We um, host these rooms every every week, and now it's been 25 rooms so far. Um, so neck to neck, Oli. Um, oh wow! Yeah. So you're you're not you're not super. New. I I had this picture all, that no. you're like a few months like. I remember talking in some of yours in New York. So I think because I've moved, like things seem a lot, <laughs> a lot further away. But so when did you join? When did you start? I started in May, and um, oh, right. from there, okay. yeah, so um, just just right at the cusp of um, when it was super hype, and yeah, um, and the rooms were uh, very much so. Everyone what um, has discussed very much so about making money and pitching themselves and it's really um it's and i've really from the very beginning um had an impression of this platform is really to gain more quicker followers just like tiktok um where the followings are um you can attain them much more quicker than say instagram or linkedin or without much effort because you're able to um bring in more content very quickly and then generate more followers and more um and also loyal followers for that matter or whatever it is that we're actually talking about um whether that is to do with our what we're passionate about or or something that we want to change in a in a particular industry like myself um and i've been i started the rooms of um speaking about um mental health and and in our industry especially um whenever we talk about the um the atrocities that is going on both in professional um and education um um it sort of dies down very quickly and i've sort of started off with that and then slowly the conversation sort of moved towards um um changing the perspective of what we think about about a certain topic whether sustainability or accessibility or any any for that matter um and that's how the sort of the rooms evolved um and um yeah so that's how we're here and i think the hype is not over in the sense i think what what is over is the celebrity celebrity endorsement and and what the room are sort of um catering towards a uh, more genuine conversation I think and that is particularly because uh, for myself I've limited uh, my interaction with Clubhouse um, when I sort of felt like it was getting a bit too draining um, because of the amount of conversations you're having with multiple peoples early on um, in Clubhouse um, 
and um back in um sort of june um yeah june july um there was a lot of booming going on especially because of activism and a lot of world um, world politics and i would see myself be in the room for eight hours straight long just listening to people having conversation and, and the, wow that um, is that is a record <laughs> that is, um, <laughs> i don't think i've done an eight hour room <laughs> no not at all but there there has been rooms that sort of lasted for a week long and they're doing campaigns. Wow, really? Yeah, absolutely. And it was absolutely monstrous and people are getting paid to actually co moderate or moderate on platforms and um on issues that were going on at the time. Um and um world politics or anything anything that anything regarding that, um, to actually inform people what's happening, um what's happening, um in, in, in the in the um in the places that are sort of um affected by conflict so i remember um remember sort of engaging with those quite a bit of time and it did and it was extremely um educational um but also very very draining and from there on i realized okay i i do not want to spend so much time um sort of um speaking and listening continuously and and not being able to absorb it as much um and yeah, yeah I, 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 I know what you're talking about. I definitely remember, like, there was the time where it's not an app where, you know, like on Instagram, you can just sit there and five, ten minutes go by, you're just scrolling down stories or whatever. I found with, with Clubhouse, you go on for, like, five minutes, you enter a room, and then you, next thing you know, you've been on for, like, 45 minutes during your lunch break talking about Bitcoin, and you're like, what the f-? you know, what happened? <laughs> like, it really sucks you into this, some kind of conversation or, or something like that. Whereas the other apps, I feel they can, you know, suck you into that kind of thing, but maybe you can snap out of it a little bit easier because you're not like involved in the conversation as deeply, so to speak. But, um, yeah, I definitely know what you're, you're saying. Um, so you think you've, you've kind of reduced your current usage of, of Clubhouse a little bit. Hundred percent. I think over the past three months, I think um, since July, end of July, August ish, I sort of reduced my um, my the amount of energy I actually put into Clubhouse and and the rooms I actually attend. So either either being um, when when I'm there and I see um, incredible rooms and who, who are the people who are actually follow and uh, and follow myself as well. Um, so those are the rooms that I know that I will. Uh, I will receive um, sort of beneficial content and I will be able to sort of get something out of it. Um, And not to say that I don't um, go to new rooms, uh, but I just pick and choose where I go actually and how much energy is invested because it's extremely draining. And Jason and I, um, of course, we know a lot of us, especially in the GAA, um, uh, we have um, lots of contributors and who co-moderate and a lot of us are still struggling um, to um, to actually find the time or actually want to give the time on Clubhouse. Um, and we realised that from an early on that, uh, okay, there's not, a lot of us um, actually have disappeared from Clubhouse. And that is to do because of the amount of energy they have given to this app initially and that completely drained them um and not being selective enough of where you're actually putting um your work in and and i would say um a lot of those networking rooms where people actually sit there in silent and new people come in and join in and talk about themselves and i found that very um in the beginning you're in the hype you want to get in the action in the conversation and that's what it was and then later on you just find i I myself in my opinion found it very meaningless um and it just did not and the sole purpose of that was to actually gain more followers and not actually meaningful connection um or actually have a meaningful conversation um and it would actually just be on a roll go on to the next person go on to the next person okay you've done speaking and that's about it that's all we want to hear um and so it was very um robotic and very and very much not personal um and i think um having rooms like that like ourselves in panel at the moment and we um we're all actually um creating meaningful conversations and and having um people who actually want to come and see the content and continue supporting us um weekly on a weekly basis um so creating that sort of um i guess trust in a platform um that is um that was lacking initially i think some of the ogs are still here and and keeping keep on con- 
continuing to create content um, are those who actually limited their um, 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 usage on like, Clubhouse. Yeah. And- I think we we were thinking about doing the same thing. It's just like, uh, you know, we were doing a talk every week and we kind of stopped it a little bit to like, you know, every week that we can do and, and that kind of thing. But uh, I think it just makes it a little easier to manage, right? Yeah, absolutely. And also, um, it just means that we're, when it comes to our own room, we're able to to actually commit to that and actually show up um, because um, at the end of the day um, people are expecting um, as for myself I mean uh, I can't even tell you the amount of times I, I felt like I didn't want to show up but I had to because um, first of all I absolutely enjoyed it and I absolutely loved having the conversations and, and being able to sort of um, challenge my own way of thinking but also the the um the result that I get afterwards, after the um, the clubhouse or the event that sort of com- finishes, and being able to hear everyone sort of um, give the positive um, sort of thoughts and and also the negative one as well. They're very constructive, but being able to get that what I what you're putting in um, is actually um, absorbed and they appreciate it makes you want to come and do it more. Um, so if we're being selective about um, how much what we're putting in and where we're actually putting in i think that's how we actually can sustain being in clubhouse and um and the only reason why the hype is over is because the celebrities are there we're there only because of the initial hype and i remember um jason would um again <laughs> shout out to jason jason would um like put up um screen- screenshots on um linkedin and i would, and i was like what what, what on earth is clubhouse i'm like i'm completely completely aloof about it and i just just did not knew such a thing existed i thought it was an invite only thing and i'm just there okay you need to um jason or someone will send you a message to invite and when that message get through you can call, join the clubhouse and app and everything um so i was very confused how the app was actually used initially because every single time you see new updates and and this is still a beta app it's still they're still tipping toe with whether they want to actually make it a um in my opinion want want to make it a um a product that's going to last for the next five years and i feel like it's only um it's only a temporary app and just like a just like any social media and at the moment what's happening with right now with instagram with tiktok right now um facebook has become instagram and this is, instagram has become tiktok and you know these will still keep on going and we need to understand that um with time they the platforms will start to disappear but the people won't and they will always come to a new platform and bring in the same and new content um yeah uh, i mean the existing content and that's why um clubhouse is a great platform to um to instill um um, new followers and and I have um, people who actually pay for the services that you provide um, when you actually um, go on to create a service or a product um, at the end. But yeah, that's all. That's all. No, that's great. I think there's some really good points there as well. Like you know, how will Clubhouse kind of move into the monetization space? I've heard them. You know, they're making tools for you know, recording it and all that kind of stuff. And uh, they they was talking about. You know, they were aiming to become the next Zoom kind of thing. Like people were tired of coming on to Zoom meetings and have cameras on and all that kind of stuff. They just, they quite like just the audio app. Um, So yeah, I think that that's, we'll we'll kind of swing around to maybe some stuff that people are excited about on Clubhouse that's on the horizon. Finally, I just want to get it, grab Georgie just to, to complete this first part of like, Georgie, you just entered the Clubhouse building. Uh, <laughs> tell us when you joined and like, uh, yeah, what made you finally jump on? Hi, everyone. Um, actually, to be honest, I knew about Clubhouse before before the hype uh, of Clubhouse for the simple reason that, um, as you mentioned, um, um, I'm the host generally of the Creative Insider, but I'm the architect half and Desiree who was also in the audience she is the the brand strategist of us and she knows a lot about trends and she she talked to me about this uh, platform way before it was hype because there were people talking here in Germany also from the political spectrum they were using this platform 
But as you said, it generated this big hype because there was the lockdown globally. And um, what um, I, what I didn't enjoy in the beginning is that nobody cared a lot about um, some issues they had about your data. And um, also, as you said, in a moment where everybody wanted to speak to each other, they kind of said, okay, we're going to do this for iPhone. I don't know if it was just because it was iPhone or just because they couldn't manage the servers, but making feel excluded part of the people that just weren't iPhone users didn't make me feel um, so happy about this this app. And um, I decided to join uh, a week ago or, yeah, we did this week the first room because we have the podcast, The Creative Insider, where we talk to creatives from different fields. You were also on the podcast, as you mentioned before. And we have done now a, quite a lot of a podcasts. Next week will be the number 80. And um, so now it's 79 Monday and 80 next week. And so one thing that podcasts have uh, and what is great on podcasts is that you have a conversation with people that are one-on-one -on -one or sometimes we have two guests, um, and uh, we do that online, um, that people can listen, but they cannot join the conversation, really. They can listen whatever you have asked. And I thought, okay, uh, I want to connect more with, with the community. And if they want to have a voice, I will just um, use Clubhouse because now it's available for everyone. And it's easy to record. And we can just... Um, have some people that can can talk about different topics uh, we mentioned starting a side project on the on the first room and so that we're gonna record it and release it but I noticed uh, a little bit of uh, a couple of flows in my first experience with it it's that we don't see each other so that was also on my podcast in the beginning and when you don't see the person who's talking um, there is a missing part of the conversation because you don't see how the people react to what you say. So if you're talking a lot and you're saying something stupid or boring or that makes people angry, you don't have the the, the feedback of their face. And that was a difficulty I had in the beginning of my podcast because I could record it only with non-video platforms. And... Um, and the other thing I don't like, I didn't like about Clubhouse is that, as you said, as you many of you mentioned, it can be very much time consuming. And I think that by, I, I love listening to, to things um, also not live. So for example, I enjoy a lot of the architecture, architect network uh, past conversation on, on Spotify and they're interesting to me. Uh, but if they weren't recorded, um, it's very much um, it's attention consuming so to say so these were yeah. my takes yeah no I mean we didn't start recording till the 19th episode and you know it's kind of like it's nice that the beginning ones weren't recorded but then when I looked back I was like man there was so many good conversations there that are just like you know lost to to the internet or not lost but like you know they can't share f with anyone else so that was definitely a core component we we wanted to record them as soon as possible so for me for me the the, the clubhouse people can can try to sort of pull 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 off again with the platform only if they add some features like recording internally and then having a direct maybe sharing on the podcasting platforms like anchor and maybe use one, maybe on-off um, webcam function, which doesn't have to be recorded, but just to be there. Because, um, as I said, in my experience with conversations, it's very important to see the the face of the other person. Because also, you know, if you're, uh, the people that talk to you want to tell something, so you stop yourself. And there are certain dynamics that you cannot... Um, yeah, you can you cannot have if you don't um, if you don't see each other. This is my opinion, uh, of course. I I don't know. And um, yeah. the other one on one, you 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 get comfortable after a while. And I notice that people forget we are recording, and they talk more uh, naturally. And here with the stage, maybe you have the pressure that uh, the other people listening. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think would you are you going to move your podcast to maybe a video based? 
Are you thinking about that or not? Um, yes, I'm thinking about it, but of course, um, the process it's, um, I'm into, in, I'm into the process. Actually, I have the videos of some of the podcasts recorded, uh, but it's quite, um, I want to join the, U- the YouTube sort of spectrum because it's a great, um, it's another, uh, search engine on the, on the internet, which can bring more people on the platform. Um, on the other side, I think that Spotify um, will be moving towards that direction too in the next uh, months, for sure, starting from the US. Um, they will be launching uh, the options of video for for some content creators. Um, but that's the only reason. Uh, it, I don't think that, I mean, I'm not like, my podcast, it's only online because it's easier to reach people from different countries. And and a podcast, for example, like Joe Rogan, where he has the people in his studio, it makes more sense because the conversation it's even more like natural and there are more interactions. Um, but when it's on on online, like on Zoom or whatever platform, it's still like a different kind of conversation. Yeah, and I hear recording classes classes um, recording rooms is on the way i think the snippet thing is the beginning but i th- i from what i've read somewhere you should be able to record rooms fully soon i think um so maybe to move on to the next question and since we've we've like it's already taken about 40 minutes to answer one <laughs> what i'll do is just summarize like three quick questions and then we'll open it up to room and then if you guys want to if you guys have something else to go to then jump on but i wanted to just ask you guys uh three things so if you can kind of answer them in a in a sentence or two i know it's going to be tricky but the first two are kind of fun what is your biggest bugbear about clubhouse so imagine the developers of clubhouse are hopefully listening to this what is your biggest bugbear what would you like to see Clubhouse have in the future? And then what, you know, what way do you feel it's actually affected the architecture industry? Because at the end of the day, we, we are all here to chat about architecture. We're total architecture nerds. Um, so, you know, what is the best way? I mean, for, for me, I think it's been networking. It's been a great way. Like I've, I've met all you guys. Um, you know, we've collaborated in some way. Hopefully I'll see you guys, you know, Stephen and Jason Mamuna, who are in the UK. If you're ever in London, let's grab a beer. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah. What's your biggest bugbear? What do you want to see in Clubhouse? And how do you think it's affected architecture? And then, uh, I'll let you guys, let, let you guys go and we'll open up the room. Also, just a shout out. There are some people in the crowd that's great to see. I see we've got like Russell, who's, who's a bit of an OG Clubhouser, Bill. Where have you been, Blue? Bill? We've missed you. We've missed you, but good to see you in the crowd. Uh, Lema, good to see you. I think Ming, I also saw. Come and join us in a minute if you want to also uh, jump on the audience. I know there's been a hand raised. I will bring someone, bring other people up in a minute, but I just want to get through the next one. But yeah, Stephen, why don't you kick us off? What's your biggest bugbear? What do you want to see? And how do you wow, feel it's affected? You kind of solved it when you were talking <laughs> about your club DJ or whatever it's called. I just installed it on my computer because I used to run. I used to club deck. Sounds amazing. Oh, yeah. I used to run. <laughs> I used to run like sounds through an iPhone. And I mean, Dude. the reality. The reality is, we have to talk about some kind of transactional va- um, value because I think most people on the stage here are content creators, and I'm sure there's some in the audience. And I think that. As Mamuno was saying, over time, especially if you're going to repeat the room for the sake of repeating the room, that is just really not an attractive proposition to me. And um, the reality is time is scarce. So the idea of recording a podcast has a lot of value to me. The downside is, though, it'll be a totally different conversation, wouldn't it? Because once the room's recorded, it kind of sets a totally different vibe than and yeah, I do, I do wonder room. that sometimes. Also, I have to give a shout out to Tim who mentioned Club Deck to me. I was like trying to make these, um, what was it called? It was called like the iJack or something. I was like plugging. <laughs> That's my... what I had. It Dude, was the right fact. I couldn't what get it to work. I was losing. Night, I was losing my mind. I was like, <laughs> I can't get this fucking thing to work. And then I know, Tim was like, I Yeah, know. just use Club Deck. I was like, Bloody hell! That's perfect. 
Well, well, so thank well you, Tim. <laughs> yeah, Tim, you legend. But I, I, I tell you what, I don't think like um, I'm going to be really brutal. What does it add to the architecture industry? Not much, I don't think. But what does it add in personal value? I think if anyone's contributed to a room, run a room, because it's a bit like Toastmaster. You're developing professional skills. You're getting more confidence. So I think it's got a more um, personal value. And you, you can make a few friends for uh, you know from Clubhouse. But um, is it super profound? Potentially, but I haven't seen that. So... Uh, call me a bit of a nihilist, but thank you for the club deck, and we'll just see where it goes, Ollie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've, I I feel like you know it's networking really that, that's affected yeah. me in the industry. But is there anything you'd love to see? Is it's the recording thing, right? We get to get get it recorded, and then wouldn't it be cool to do a clubhouse in person or <laughs> casting it remotely? Wouldn't it? Just, that would be cool. Let's call it pub house, and then we just yes. we just. <laughs> I love it. There you go. You should, you should register the app name. The yeah. Cheers, Olin. Pub House. All right, Mike, you're next on the on the list. Do you wanna do you wanna jump in? Or I know Jason, if case you, I know you have to uh, maybe pop off in a bit. If you're a bit pressed for time, then then jump in. Yeah, if that's okay, Mike. Yeah. If you're no objection. Yeah. Yeah, it's I okay. Think, I think you definitely the recording side because that is the number one question that people message me. Um, off the app, they say, "Oh, are you going to be recording it? I can't make it." Um, that is that is another bug bugbear with um with people as well. I mean, I'm I'm just going to be completely honest with you here. It's a real struggle to actually now get people um who I've relied on as moderators to actually turn up and and help me out. So I did last week's room on my birthday because no one would step in. And people did in the end, and, and and I really I thanked everyone who actually came to the room. But you know, I you know I really wanted people to step up to the plate um, and help me out on my birthday. But I I wasn't willing to let the room go, and so I so I did it. And um, I just want to thank Russell as well in the audience before I go on to the next question because Russell got me onto the app, and he's a legend on TikTok. You probably 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 aware of that my my yeah. instagram feed is suddenly being taken over by russell i was like uh, i'm not on tiktok so i didn't i haven't seen many of them and now suddenly russell you're all over my instagram page and i'm, I'm enjoying them i'm learning a lot i'm learning a lot as well so. <laughs> they're fantastic and the comedy value i mean this guy should be an actor on tv um i keep telling him this and i keep telling him to monetize it because if anyone out of us in this room could monetize um um, social media, um, it, it would be Russell. Um, so, so yeah. So, so the book, the book bears on Clubhouse are probably I've kind of probably covered that. What do I want to see in Clubhouse? Yes, I want to see recording. Um, how has it benefited architecture? I think, I think I know Stephen said it's very small, but I I've met some wonderful people and I've had some incredible conversations with people. And it does, yes, it does improve your confidence of public speaking. And I've d I did quite a lot of public speaking before I came on Clubhouse, so that did help. Um, but I think it's it's that shared knowledge of like listening to other people speaking on topics that you can learn from um, live. And I think that's that's incredibly valuable um, to architecture because I really I really want to build a club that's worldwide, and I, I really encourage people um, from different countries to join me. I'm always trying to reach out to people, and that's why I'm I'm trying, and I've got a number of people, and I'm just waiting for them to to really commit to start a Southern Hemisphere um, Global Architect Alliance. So it's going to be based in Australia. Um, it'll run at 7 p.m. on Thursdays like it does in the UK. Oh, cool. And we're hopefully trying to do the same subject, but in a different hemisphere so we can have more people, um, you know, to get, part, you know, to discuss what we want to discuss. Um, um, but, but you know, we're losing like 50% of the world because everyone else is asleep. <laughs> so yeah yeah so, you know, exactly that, that is the thing so yeah they're, they're my three things and thank you for doing the room ollie i really appreciate it and i do have to jump off because 
I haven't seen my my fiance for eight months, and she's just arrived today. So go yeah, for it, man. Thank go, you. go, grab her. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks for joining. Okay. Um, yeah. Next up, Mike. Do you want to give us with uh, your your bugbear for for uh, Clubhouse? What would you love to see, and how do you think if it has affected architecture, the architecture industry? Yeah, sure. I think uh, the biggest one for me is it's since I started on the app, it's been really difficult to find things the way that I would think are intuitive. Like this is an audio app, right, the, of course. The search but, thing kind of sucks, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. And I just feel like there's got to be a very simple, elegant, minimalist way that is still in keeping with the way the app works or looks. But there's just an easy way to search and find things. I mean, that's been the biggest issue. I feel like um, if they could figure that out, that would make everything else go so much more fluidly. Um, for me, long term, we've been talking a little bit about here, uh, recording and things like that. I really feel like if they could, you know, as a, this, there would be so many hoops to like jump over to figure this out. But if they could make it almost like Anchor is as a platform for creating podcasts and incorporate a... Uh, a way to, you know, briefly record uh, the conversations, but then have it be maybe its own RSS feed, so that you're you're integrating podcasting and this live conversation in some way that then creates some kind of uh, small permanence on the internet. I think that that would be helpful because then, as people who want to share their ideas, but then maybe want to do it on a more consistent basis, it would give some more um, tools to that. I think that that could be kind of a long-term goal for this app. Maybe it's not, maybe they should stay separate and this is just conversations and podcasts or podcasts, but I feel like there's a missed opportunity if they don't do something. Um, and then I think for architecture, the one thing that's really helped me is, I, I mentioned it a little bit before, is just like getting those uh, challenging beliefs or learning more about other cultures. Like I don't have the opportunity. Um, I live in Buffalo, New York. I have the opportunity to interact with people directly every day that are in my sphere of influence, right? In New York state and um, other places because I'm involved with like the Architects Institute of America, but um, I don't have the opportunity every day to talk to you, find folks who are not anywhere in the United States, you know, and, and have these conversations with people on the other side of the world um, in a very direct live way. And I think that that maybe not directly for architecture, but for just communication in general has really opened up um, new opportunities to have conversations. Yeah, I think that's great. There's definitely something about the way you say it's being, like a podcast platform. I think there's something in that, like linking it to Anchor. And so it can be like, you know, this thing, I think that's what uh, Georgie said. There's something kind of interesting about that because podcasting is getting so big and there's no kind of one go-to platform for that. So there's definitely something in that. Tim, I don't know if you want to jump in as well. Um, what's your favorite, what's your bugbear? What would you love to see? And do you think it's it's affected the architect industry in some way? I think uh, I I don't have anything to add for like anything to the, the platform, but in terms of the architecture industry and how I've seen it affected is that I I know early on there was a really big club on Clubhouse called Black Architecture, and that was a club that was full of black architects from all around the world talking about uh, architecture throughout Africa, and it helped a lot of people on Clubhouse understand that black architecture is not just African architecture. And when you say African architecture, you're talking about a country or not a country, but a, an entire continent. And you're not actually talking about a place, right? And people never understood that to this day. And the other part that I wanted to mention about how I think arch architecture can start to rise on Clubhouse is Architects are usually not good at speaking. I'm just going to put that out there as a blank statement because a lot of architects I've seen on here who started on here started off without knowing how to speak in a good way, right? Like there were a lot of nuances in how we talk that regular people don't understand. And the more you use this app and you learn how to speak and you're cognizant about it, you get better at it. 
you step out of your introverted shell if you're an introvert, and then you get to a comfort level where you can carry a conversation and have meaningful dialogue. And the last thing that I hope to see is architects sharing their voices on bigger things that actually relate to our profession, but sharing it publicly. I think we're a profession that has always stayed like in the shadows and we never actually speak out about something like the UC Santa Barbara um, fiasco that's currently underway where there's a lot of discussions about uh, Charlie Munger and his design of their new student dorms. It was a big thing that happened, but no oh. architects actually actually started a room on Clubhouse to talk about the design that's of it. That's the, the and, mega dorm thing? That's right. Yeah, it's a uh, dorm right, with 5,200 right. rooms and no windows for students. And no architects came on here to talk about it, even though it was a trending topic related to our profession. And so it's something that I think we can start to move into. And a lot of people who are younger who want to speak out, I'm finding will come on Clubhouse and start rooms like Mamuna and other people. So I appreciate the people who do that. And in a way, I guess that's saying, well, Tim, why don't you start the rooms? And I think I've done so many rooms in the past that I'm now just waiting to listen in and be a listener other than an active participant. Very profound. I, I liked all of that. I think that's a great point. And I really like the point about talking as an architect because you don't often get to do that to uh, you know non-architects as much, which I think is super important. Um, and yeah, just kind of sharing different perspectives and different views on things is, is super interesting. So thank you for that. Um, next up, should we go Mamuna? Do you want to say what's, uh, what are your, th what your thoughts are? What's your bugbear? What would you love to see? And do you think it's affected architecture in a, in a, in any way, positive or negative? Yeah, absolutely. I think I'll start off with um, how Clubhouse could improve in terms of audience engagement. Um, and that's lacking quite a bit, especially how we can't see the audiences reacting. I think, um, you know, in the audience panel, we have mics and we flash, we're flash. flashing mics to show our sort of support or um, enthusiasm for that matter. I think having a sort of clapping emoji or some sort of emoji that the audience are sort of engaging and, and, and they're also... Um, they also feel like part of the conversation and I feel like there's there's quite a disconnect between the audience and um and the panel of speakers um and when the um yeah so I think in that region there needs to be some sort of um um a cohesive um conversation between the two sides um even though we're managing and co-moderating or moderating the the conversation um on the other side of it i'd say um again um already touched upon as a search engine as well as recording um but prior to that i've actually started transcribing my talks and um and the conversation that we had i actually write them in written pdf formats and um initially i would actually um I remember uh, previously in a room they would say oh if you're in a room we'll say a word or a keyword and if you're present in the room and just DM me that word and I'll send you the PDF document. And that's what I started to do at the moment to get more people engaging and being interested in the conversations that were going on. Um, so that is something I'd, I'd, um, I'd like to see change is that recording aspect of it. Um, and the other side is absolutely the conversations that we're having as architects. I don't think... I don't think even in education and work we have had these conversations ever, especially being able to challenge our own thoughts and our own way of thinking and being stubborn in our own ways as well. And and I think especially when I was hosting my rooms, I think I've learned incredible amount of knowledge from everyone that came up onto the panel um, and not the people who I've myself invited, but people who actually knew people come in and challenge those thoughts and and contributed more to it and and I think that is one of the most fruitful conversations um Clubhouse really does um where other sort of podcasts won't be able to do in terms of um and being such a free flow um app and anyone can come in sort of throw off the conversation or steer it to a new direction and yeah I think that is one of the great things about about this platform really um yeah I'm done speaking thank you yeah, I think that's right. It's, it's so, yeah, the, the conversations that we've had are just, you just don't get that very typically. Even if if you go to conferences and things like that, you know, you don't quite get the, the number and the level of, of conversations. Uh, Georgie, I know you kind of answered it already. I don't know if you want anything to add to it. Otherwise, I'll start to open it up 
to the audience. If anyone wants to come on stage and give their thoughts on what you think about Clubhouse, I know we've got Frank and Andrew waiting to talk. But um, yeah, is there any? Do you want to add any others, Georgie, or what? What are you excited to see, or do you think it's changing architecture in any way? Um, yeah, I think the main function that could have it's like to. I mean, as uh, Tim said before, um, discussing those issues as an architect, maybe it's like doing it on a, a platform where you talk to an audience and I see Clubhouse as really where you bring on this audience to finally connect and then give your feedback. I'm more a, a fan of these conversations where you're more one-on-one, -on -one, more in team, so to say, and then you release them. And then, you know, if you say something wrong, maybe the audience can be uh, fired up to say their own opinion, but they can't. And I think this is a great way to try to, to, to pull them on and hear their voices and hopefully they'll be constructive. And uh, regarding what features, I don't know, I would like the clubhouse to be a little bit more intuitive or I don't know, clear because as a brand new user, it's very simple. I mean, there's not much that you can do wrong, but still there are some little things that I don't know, for example, I don't know, it's not so intuitive on the first use, I think. It. Yeah, it's kind of kind of a weird, ugly looking app, actually, isn't it? I, I never really liked the <laughs> the like mustard colored <laughs> vibe. The, it feels like uh, your notes on on your phone for for Apple users, right? Yeah, the the color is not not so much a problem, but I don't know. There is no clarity. For example, last last time when I did my yeah. room the first time, I couldn't see where I end the room. Or uh, yeah, there were some technical bugs too. For some, for some reason, I couldn't see people that are on stage, although they were on stage. Um, not like that. Probably was just one one time accident. But in general, although you don't, you cannot do much. It's not so clear how you do the the few things that you can do. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks guys for for kind of adding those questions. I'm going to open up to the audience. If you guys want to drop off Mike and Tim and Mamuna and and Georgie feel free to do it if you want to stick around then we'd love to have you uh, but I know Frank you've been waiting patiently uh, with your hand up so I invite you to come up and uh, give us your thoughts on Clubhouse well, how, you know what's your what's your thoughts when have you joined and yeah just uh, first of all I want to notice that half of the stage has left after they had their say so that's on that I, I'm a social scientist and an audio engineer in Germany uh, I also studied environmental psychology, which has a lot to do with the roots of architecture and landscape design. So I'm at the intersection of uh, social psychology and environments, including buildings, virtual rooms and all of that. And I've researched social media quite a bit, not just Twitter and Facebook, but also university integrated services, stuff like that. So cool. uh, ar and architecture is, is a thing uh, I need to understand as audio engineer. And I have contacts into Bauhaus within my family. So um, I'm, I'm on this app since fe February. Um, so it says end of January, but really from February. And I started at German rooms and after two to three months into the English ones, which are much more interesting for me. And interestingly enough, the, these architecture rooms have popped into my feeds like within the last two months, not before. And um, I think that uh, Clubhouse had a good timing for them with the pandemic. And I think that this will stay for a variety of reasons. So if you want to have a town hall meeting and you can't have it uh, because there, there are no, no rooms, you, you can't pay the bill or whatever, you maybe want to have it here. And uh, artists can and have an audience and you can have all of this international uh, um, publicity uh, audience crowd whatever so um yeah so what i think about the biggest bugbear here on this app is uh, is the blocking uh, that must change because it works very different than it works on twitter or facebook uh because basically one person that blocks uh, how many people whatever they can't join a room full of people when they are on stage so i think that's an issue uh to uh, think in a different way or to 
countermeasure or something like that. It is really an issue, and I'm looking at the social dynamics here for a couple of months, and toxic people, which are not in these uh, in these spaces, but we just want to think about other spaces as, as well as we are interacting. And uh, for the effect on architecture, I think uh, there has been an international reach. You have more visibility, there's a transdisciplinary recognition for the topics, and it's not just the networking between uh, just you, but you have visitors and listeners, you can have a, a collaboration and stuff like that. So um, what I think uh, you um, you as architects should do, not just host uh, more rooms, but you need to get out into other discussions, that is to the inter- and transdisciplinary effect, just get into uh, other rooms and, and bring your points. There have been rooms uh, in ethics which have uh, talked about these building stuff you talked about and uh, even, yeah, they have been even uh, talking about architecture and buildings. So there's like the ethics club that's just uh, literally on ethics and they have talked about that and it, uh, yeah, mostly um, medical uh, ethics people in there discussing this because ethics is the strongest in the medicine uh, area. So you want to watch out because that will also pull in more people. I've seen that in a variety of disciplines where, you know, people just go into other spaces and uh, talk their viewpoint into that. You will be recognized more and you will pull people towards uh, your, your, your point of view. Uh, so that is, I think, very important for you. And for the recording, I, I think it's good that it will come, but I, 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 um, uh, it will help to a certain extent. But then we need to be aware that there are a lot of podcasts out there and this will kind of compete with that and, and it will have some side effects. I fear a little bit that we lose the idea that you can come here just share your mind openly and you you are not recorded you kind of you're kind of safe with your thoughts in in the moment so that's something i fear and uh, with that i'm done yeah no i think that's all great points i mean that's that's definitely i think your last point is is one we've definitely been thinking about i mean we obviously tell people it's recorded and we try and put that little icon at the top but yeah we do think like you know does it prevent people from coming up and, and talking? Maybe we should keep these just open. Also, yeah, I think I'm, I'm getting a bit lazy going into other other industries and other conversations. I was definitely doing that at the beginning and then, you know, just been kind of kind of lazy. Uh, but it's it really interesting to hear, hear your perspective and for whatever reason we are uh, – the architects are uh, infecting your uh, your your feed, which is which is good. I hope. <laughs> and obviously, damn, I could have used your help with uh, setting up some kind of re- recording for this because I'm sure it would be trivial for someone of your skill set in in the audio world. <laughs> but it was driving me nuts. Uh, yes. <laughs> but no, thanks for that, Frank. That's uh, I think it's a great perspective. And then we got Andrew, who's also been waiting a little bit. Uh, Andrew, do you want to jump on? and give us your perspective sure uh thanks for bringing me up thanks for um i uh i was gonna say the thing that i like about uh about the platform is actually the reason that i'm here right i got a notification that mamuna was going to be speaking um i I got on the app at a very similar time and um i'm a professor of architecture in philadelphia um so the ability to connect with people beyond you know my like in my professional field and also in in you know the interaction with my city i think for those of us who are kind of established in practice that's one thing but to be able to connect um outside of our usual circle to uh you know now i get to speak regularly with architects in malaysia um that's just not something that would happen in my day to day um and you know to talk to folks in london i think has become really valuable because as much as um, there's the issues going on in my city, it is also helpful to see what is either unique or shared. And, um, and that's really powerful. But even more so than us um, professionals, I think being able to connect to students. Um, and I see a lot of the students on here that I've, I've enjoyed hearing from. And the fact that there's this democratization between um, who we are and and just everybody on this app. Um, I really enjoy the kind of um, 
the leveling of, you know, usually there's uh, a little bit more hierarchy, especially in, in academia where, you know, we kind of have the critic and review um, sessions. And, and actually it's been very interesting to hear students um, with the power to speak um, truth and talk about, well, maybe there's a better way that we can go about doing this. Maybe there's a better way of going about um, going about architecture education and and hearing this not just from the students at my own university, but now hearing their voices um, amplified, not just echoed by students across the world. Um, and again, I will point to, you know, students from India, students and uh, architects, young designers from the UK, young designers from Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, um, because I think those, at least the spaces I've been, have been strongly represented by the, that group. Um, and then I think, uh, the bugbear I would give is that this is a tool, but it's not the be all end all tool. And so I kind of wonder to use our own lingo. I wonder about scope creep a little bit, if this is going to be everything. Um, I think it's very useful for what it's useful for. And I think, you know, there's other apps that are also useful for what they're useful for. Um, so uh, anyway, thank you for having me up and, and, a, and a very interesting, uh, very interesting room and topic. Yeah, no, thank you for joining. I think, um, I totally agree with, with the, uh, notion of like connecting with architects all around the world and we can share our opinions and stuff like that. I think that's definitely been the biggest positive for the architect industry. Um, you know, I've collaborated with some people that, you know, I'd met through this app and I would have never met, uh, purely for geographical reasons. Um, you know, without this app, really, because you have that personal connection. Like, you know, Mike, Tim, um, Georgie, Mamuna, I all kind of know you guys, but I've never met any of you, right? But we kind of know each other in a way because we've just been on, you know, various different rooms together and, and all this kind of stuff. So for me, that's definitely the the number one pro of, uh, of Clubhouse. And an old OG from the beginning, Bill, Good to see you again. We haven't seen you in a little while, man. Where where you been? Where you been? We've missed you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good to see you, Ali. Good to see everyone. And uh, it is funny, you know. I I think I was only really just a few months, or uh, I came the end of November. I think it says December uh, when I came on. And, um, and oh, that's early. That was really uh, like 2019, then. No, wait, um, 2020. 20, 20, yeah, yeah, 20, Sorry, yeah. and uh, and. Uh, so, but it is funny. I do feel like an OG, um, but uh, yeah. And, and, you know, and it, it, I think I kind of agree with what everybody has said, the idea of the timing of when this came about, um, at least for all of us, because I, I have some friends that run it from the way, way back in the beginning. And, and I was always that person that is just too busy for social media, you know, and, and, and finally, you know, uh, a friend in Nashville, uh, kind of convinced me, come on, just get on here. There's conversations you'd be interested in. And, and it was that timing because of the pandemic. And, um, and some people that have heard me talk on here in the past, uh, for me that I was on a sabbatical and, you know, it put my studio on hold. And, and so, so I did finally have more time. So all of us in the pandemic were on a sabbatical in a sense, you know, and, looking for right, right. interactions and, and uh, to share information. And so, so I remember when I was first on and when I first uh, crossed paths with you and, and Tim and Basil and everybody that, uh, that we were all like so chatty and, 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 and it was awesome because so much good information was being exchanged. And I remember I was always taking notes and like Googling stuff on the side and um, and so it was really inspiring my work and my stuff that I'm prototyping and what I'm working on because of sharing conversations with all of you guys was informing me about things that either it be software or means and methods or just uh, you know, just concepts that stuff that I wanted to explore and that would kind of enlighten my work. And so I think I differ from a lot of the opinions that have been expressed in that I don't think that Clubhouse should just become another one of those, you know, because there's plenty of podcast platforms and there's plenty of, there's YouTube, you know, and I, 
I think the whole idea of not having, uh, you know, we're just seeing each other's uh, uh, icon or whatever, or pictures that we're not seeing, uh, we're not, we're not zooming, you know, and, and, and we've all heard about zoom fatigue and, you know, and all those things of when you, it is great when you can see the expressions so you can see if you're boring people. But on the other hand, it's great that like half the time you, you guys have been talking, I've been listening, I was doing stuff. And, and even if I was on the stage and if there's not a camera on me, which, you know, you can turn that camera off on some other platforms and stuff like that. But, but I think the whole original idea was that you can be multitasking and you can choose your level of how much you're actually engaging. And so you don't have any videos. So it's taking away that whole one more thing to be concerned about. And, and then it being a streamlined platform that, yeah, we have to figure it out as we go. And then some people that you meet on here, they inform you about some of the things like flashing your mic and what that means. And so you kind of had to like find your way. Like there were times where I wish that, yeah, where's the instruction guide. But I did also kind of like that it was just sort of organic, like in the real world where, you know, I don't know if any of you guys, I'm sure we've all had that experience where these days, because you're used to swiping things and going back and everything you can do on your iPad or your, or your, your phone or your computer, you pick up like a, a, a paper publication and you wish you could swipe it or you wish you could like, you know, go back to, you know, something else. And, you know, and you think, oh, wait a minute, you can't do that. in the analog world. And so I think they were trying to bring some analog back into our experience about like, you have to figure it out yourself a little bit instead of it just all being there and you figuring out the software or the user interface. And um, so I kind of did like that once I got through the growing pains of it and and uh and you know as far as the only thing that i think that a lot of us experienced from the beginning was that you're talking and then you want to have a visual because we're designers we're very visual visually oriented oriented and so then the whole idea that we would say okay well look at my instagram i'm going to put something on there right now and, you know, so now they finally have like some back channels and some things and you can share a link and things like that. So I, I think that's helped a lot. And, you know, for me personally, I don't want it to turn into all the other ones because, you know, like Mamuna was saying that Instagram becomes Facebook, Facebook becomes Instagram, like, you know, and, you know, they all become Twitter and, you know, and everything blends out and becomes the same thing. And I think, the, some of the challenge of this uh, platform is some of the charm of it. Um, earlier on, I think some of the conversations, because we were all so excited to be ch exchanging information, really had a lot of meat about architecture. And I was really excited about, like, say, like, I like hearing what Tim has to say a lot of the times uh, about his approach of architecture and it's sort of like the he brings a very human side to architecture and, and, and Ollie, like, you know, that in the past I've been kind of analog and you're stretching my brain with, you know, all your, your software stuff and, and, uh, uh, the, the ideas of the new, the fourth wave or fifth wave of how we're going to produce architecture. And, um, so, so I think I'm, you know, me coming back, I've been gone for a while and I I'm hoping, you know, I haven't seen the meat here, like there used to be so since you guys are all here in the room that and sounds like you guys are also kind of like checking it out or how much time do we really have to be here anymore uh, hopefully you guys are still bringing some meat to these conversations you know something we're, that, that we're Bill was meat. talking about when when Bill was talking it reminded me of something that i would want as like in the rooms right not like a and a feature to the app that the developer should add but more just how rooms are being run i think in the past that there were the social rooms where you can join and talk about anything like you were at a pub you were having a drink with bill and with ali and everyone on stage and you're just kind of bantering right that's fine but there were also rooms that were curated there were rooms that were like you join it's a specific topic there might be an expert in there there might not be and then people start joining the stage, right? And at some point, 
there's always that one person who joins the stage and they start to introduce their whole life as their background, right? So I was born in New York. My mother is from here. My father's from there. This has nothing to do with architecture, but I'm going to spend 10 minutes saying it anyway. And no one would cut them off, right? They would just let them keep going. And that's how it is right now. I join a lot of rooms. That happens. People just let it go. In the past, if there was a curated room, you would stop the person and say, hey, Mike, can you just get to the point? We just need to know your name and what you want to ask. But I think it changed at some point where that might be disrespectful or people don't feel comfortable doing that. And it took me a while when I was running a lot of rooms to do that. But I think value is the biggest thing that I'm starting to miss now on Clubhouse, that there are rooms where you get a lot of value, but I think the leadership of the rooms started to change. It started to get very lax if it's a curated topic or like a topic that should be curated. And then if you have a social room, all of this that I'm saying doesn't even apply because you should just be social. But if it's a curated room with a specific topic, I think people should be in there sharing some ideas and really diving deep into discussion, debate, whatever it is. And if someone has something that doesn't relate, cut them off, tell them, hey, you can share that in five minutes. Let us just close this one idea. You know, I don't feel like that happens as much now. Yeah, I think I, I I do see what you're saying there. And Bill, we are cooking up some meat. We're cooking up some steaks, some steak talks ready to come. So do stay tuned. I think one of the things I've I just done is is you know I think this has been the start of Architect Network. You know, our, our focus was always more to get to YouTube and and online courses because you know the ultimate goal was to teach people about you know technology and architecture but uh i think i'm you know we're not gonna we're always gonna keep clubhouse because it's kind of like the way we started we're, we're not gonna i'm not gonna give up on the platform yet although my biggest bear right now is i just moved from the us to the uk so i have i started my clubhouse journey on a us number now i have a uk number i'm literally just paying to keep that number because you can't uh, transfer your profile from one phone number to another and therefore like I, they just said you have to delete your profile and start again with a new number and I was like that is super annoying <laughs> so if you're, li- if you're listening Clubhouse let me change my number because it's super annoying anyway <laughs> otherwise I think the only other thing you brought up Bill which was kind of interesting is maybe like so you see Faisal has shared uh, Linktree so you know plug in our, our platform a little bit here but it'll be cool to do the same thing but maybe an image or maybe you could like uh i guess this is a, being a bit more of an architect like a, a visual cue to the talks and things like that would be kind of fun uh otherwise though i think i'll uh i'll maybe close up the room here everyone in the audience be sure to follow all of our uh, guests here and check out their clubs and all that kind of stuff i think you know We'll, there'll be a new revival of Clubhouse. I don't think any of us are going anywhere, but uh, I think it was great to have you guys on stage and, and share everyone. So thanks everyone for joining. Uh, if you do want to, f- you know, follow us, you can follow uh, our Instagram page and all that kind of stuff through our link tree up there. We do talks every week or so now. We're not so uh, so militant to have every single week, but uh, we will have a talk in a week or two. Uh, we will also be launching new videos on YouTube, which is also where we post these talks. So stay tuned. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and we'll see.